Welcome back to the channel everybody. It's time to do a valve last adjustment on this common 6.7 diesel. Now this truck has 180,000 miles on it. Cummins obviously recommends the valve adjustment at 150,000 mile intervals. So I don't know if it's ever been done on this truck. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think I have a little bit of a valve noise issue on this truck. Might be hard to tell, but there's there's a ticking noise that you can hear. I'm hoping that's just from the valve. It's right up top. Adjusting the valves on these engine is not very hard. It is a little bit of a time consuming procedure, but it's not hard at all. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's look at some of the tools you will need to do the valve adjustments on the 6.7 Cummins. 10 millimeter socket. 8 millimeter socket get your valve cover off you'll need a 15 millimeter shallow with the long ratchet that'll help turn the engine you will need a 5 millimeter allen wrench for the adjusting screw on the rocker arms a paint marker will help 14 millimeter wrench that'll be used for the jam nut on the rockers when we're doing the adjustments and any normal ratchets and such First thing we need to do is get underneath the truck and mark our top dead center on the balancer and our paint marker will come in handy for that. Underneath of the truck we're looking at the balancer here on the outer edge of it here there will be a groove and some letters that'll be TDC which indicates top dead center and it happens to be right here on this balancer. Let me see if I can focus in on that. Here's a little better picture of it. Again, that's TDC, top dead center. There's the groove. That's the line or the groove we need to paint mark so we can rotate the engine. This needs to be on top at 12 o'clock position. I've paint marked or top dead center on the balancer. Now we can go ahead and rotate the engine. Rotate the, the engine to bring the mark on top at 12 o'clock position. You can use a couple different methods. If you have the barring tool for the Cummins engine, that's the best way to do it. You could definitely use the starter to bump it into position. That's always the hardest. You might go too far or not enough, but it's definitely doable. Another way you can do it with a 15 millimeter socket on the front, on the bolts of the balancer. I don't like doing that. I think that's just a lot of pressure for them bolts. The method I sometimes like to use is just by uh, using bumping the starter, get it close enough. And then at the bottom, you can remove the inspection plate on the transmission here, just three eight millimeter bolts. And you can gain access to the flywheel there. And then again, once you're close enough, you can do that. You can take a pry bar and just go carefully tooth by tooth and you can get that to line up exactly where you want it and you can turn it in either direction with the pry bar like that just making sure you're not pushing in the wrong direction damaging anything the edge of the transmission or the flywheel itself and you can get it in position you can see that yellow mark on the balancer right at 12 o'clock pointing straight up and down this way now this method again we're looking for top dead center on cylinder one now you could be completely 360 degrees off and this could be a top dead center for your cylinder six but we won't know that until we have the valve cover off so once we have the valve cover off we will confirm that we can work with it that way too if it is a six cylinder but keeping everything simple if we have to rotate it at that point we'll rotate it again complete 360 degrees and that does become harder doing it this way with the pry bar on the flywheel but it's achievable um, so we'll see our next step let's go ahead and take these covers off and we'll get the valve cover off we'll remove these eight millimeter bolts here take out the dipstick here remove this cover first and then we'll take off the eight millimeter bolts holding this filter cover on and we'll take that off so now that we got the top cover off, the CCV filter out of there, we can go ahead and remove the valve cover itself. There's 10 millimeter bolts here, 
two more in the back we'll have to remove this electrical connector here so let's get that done so six bolts on the valve cover there's a hose here that connects there's one more back here and this electrical connector to the valve cover once those are off you should be able to lift your cover up and away from the engine keeping in mind you want to keep the try to keep the gasket on the head or at least the or rocker cover what have you uh, sometimes they tend to stick to the valve cover and they want to try to lift with the valve cover you want to make sure it all stays put where it should remember that contains the electrical wires for your injectors this would be a good time to change the valve cover gasket if that's been leaking on you or what have you that's something you want to plan ahead so let's get this valve cover off of here we have the valve cover off that exposes our rockers the adjustment nuts that we need to adjust for the proper lash nothing else needs to be removed the rocker box can stay we can adjust them like this so the first thing we need to verify is we're at top dead center on our balancer you can see the mark pointing at 12 o'clock straight up that should put us our number one cylinder at top dead center meaning it's basically at compression stroke both of the valves should be closed so they'll make these loose so you can verify that by moving these hopefully you can hear that there's the exhaust so there's no pressure on these so that's kind of a confirmation that we're right where we should be you have a 50 50 chance when you spin that motor over you could have the number six on that stroke you could work it that way also but it just gets confusing so we'll keep it simple so if you're not at top dead center on number one just spin the motor 360 degrees and try it again in my case we lucked out we're good so we'll go ahead and start adjusting these now keep in mind from front to back being six cylinder it's one two three four five and six from front front to back as far as cylinder numbers now another thing to keep in mind the front one here that's your intake rocker this one is exhaust intake is smaller exhaust is bigger another way to differentiate is exhaust if you look at the valve where this pushes that goes out that way to the exhaust manifold your intake is here which is going that way kind of so again it's basically intake exhaust intake exhaust just to keep track of things so now we can start adjusting these and it seems like I got quite a bit of play especially on like that one that'll cause some noise so that's actually a good thing because I was getting some noise and I think most of that was coming from these valves so valve cover off we're ready to adjust some valves before we do any adjustments let's talk about what we want the valves lash to be adjusted to now on the 67 Cummins it's marked right on the valve cover here so your engine's got to be cold and they recommend the intake at 10 thousandths and the exhaust at 26 thousandths now from my understanding of working on some five nines recommendations on those were 10 thousand on the intake and 20 thousand on the exhaust when the 67 was introduced the intake was kept the same exhaust was up to 26 thousandths from 20. now a lot of the reasoning for that was the emission control systems your EGR DPF systems now this trucks fully deleted it doesn't have an EGR def system's been deleted not going to see the higher EGTs like originally planned for this motor since it's deleted still we'll stick with the old 10 and 20 so I'm going to adjust these valves like the old 5.9s with the intake being at 10 thousandths and the exhaust being at 20 thousandths now you can do whatever you wish to do if your trucks not deleted 
or you're not comfortable with what I'm suggesting, I'd recommend sticking with what Cummin recommends and adjusting to those figures and everything should be fine. So now that we're sorted out on that, let's go ahead and start adjusting some valves. One important tool I forgot to mention in the beginning that you will need is feeler gauges, especially the bent one like this. This one was actually not bent, I bent it just because of the clearances. The number one cylinder at top dead center, we can start adjusting our valves. The procedure of actually adjusting the valve itself is fairly easy. You want to have a little piece of paper with your info written down as far as some guidance. Now with the cylinder number one at top dead center, we can go ahead and adjust the number one, number two, and number four intake valve. So it'll be the first one here, that's the number one intake. We can also adjust the number two intake and the number four intake. And also at the same time, we can do number one exhaust, number three exhaust, and we can also do number five exhaust. And after that, we'll go ahead and rotate the engine 360 degrees. Then we can do rest of the cylinders. Uh, so in this first procedure, we're going to be doing exhaust on number one, just because it's a little easier to film. So I'll show you how to do that. So you want to insert your feeler gauge. Again, I'm doing 20,000 on this exhaust side. You want to insert it under this little ball socket that's under this rocker here on the exhaust side. I'll show you on this one and other ones are done the same way. You want the feeler gauge under this ball socket here. Sometimes they do get hard to get in. You can you can move move this. You can pick that up by hand if you need to to get your feeler gauge underneath of this. And this again was most likely set to 26 to begin with. I wanted at 20, so this one's way loose in here. There's no drag on that feeler gauge, barely any. Use your 14 millimeter wrench on this jam nut. You want to break that jam nut loose. I already have it loose here. You can leave the you can leave the wrench on there. You can leave the wrench right on that jam nut. You want to take your 5 millimeter Allen wrench on the set screw. So by turning it clockwise, you're basically tightening it. And you can tighten it up and then back it off to loosen it. And all we're trying to do is get the right feel here with the feeler gauge. That's a little too tight, so I'll have to back it off. Kind of hard to do with one hand. So I'll get that adjusted to where we need it. Prex size feeler gauge under the rocker ball here. You want to try to move this back and forth. And you want to have a slight drag to this. You don't want it too tight. And you don't want it too loose. And you want to try to keep that consistent as you're adjusting all the other valves. So I'm pretty happy with where this is at. So I think my settings achieved. We'll go ahead and tighten up the jam nut. And once you have it where you're happy with it, you want to hold your set screw with your Allen wrench and you want to use your 14 millimeter and tighten up the uh, jam nut. And then you can recheck it again. If you're happy with it, you can move on to the next one or you can readjust. Now these jam nuts, I believe the spec on these is 18 foot pounds. You can torque them. That's where they should be at. So I'm done pretty much with the first cylinder. I'll go ahead and adjust the intake on one, two, and four, and the exhaust valves on one, three, and five. So I'll go ahead and repeat the same procedure on those cylinders, and we'll move on to the next step. What helps is paint marking the cylinders you've completed. Helps to keep track of everything. Now our next step is going to be rotating the engine full 360 degrees on that balancer. So that mark that we originally brought at 12 o'clock will give that a full 360 rotation 
and put that again at 12 o'clock. What that will do is put our number six cylinder at TDC and we'll go ahead and adjust the remaining cylinders using the same procedure. So I was able to rotate the engine full 360, bring in that TDC mark at 12 o'clock again. I just use my pry bar on the flywheel. Again, you can use a 15 millimeter socket in front of the balancer if you like. You can even try to use, a, I believe it's a 19 or a 21 on the alternator nut. <clears throat> you could try to spin it that way, or if you got the barring tool that goes on the passenger side here. Number six at TDC. Now we can go ahead and adjust the intake valve on cylinder three, five, and six. And also we can adjust the exhaust valves two, four, and six cylinders. Again, these are the remaining cylinders. These shouldn't have the marks on it since we haven't done them. So basically the remaining cylinders, we'll go ahead and adjust those using the same procedure that we did earlier. I was able to go ahead and, and adjust all the valves using the same procedure. Now in the back for cylinder five and six, you may feel like there's not enough room um, or your injector wires are in the way or the harnesses are in the way. Now you can definitely remove the whole gasket by disconnecting the harness connectors and all the wires on the injectors if that makes it easier for you. But it's definitely not necessary. It could be done with all that intact. What does help in the back, I ended up taking the feeler gauges out of the out of the big bunch I had here and just kind of bending them around just to fit just because it's just not enough room back there with the cylinder five and six. Uh, but it's definitely achievable. Another thing that helps is a box end wrench like this angled um, and just a normal Allen wrench. I was able to use this on the, on the some of the front uh, cylinders, but in the back there was just not enough room even angling it this way. This one worked out better. And then uh, box end wrench to tighten up the jam nut. So that worked out well. We have all the valves lash adjusted. We can rotate the motor again and retest everything. So here we have the valve cover back on. All the covers are back on. Everything hooked up. All the electrical connectors are back on. Um, so that job was fairly easy. It is a bit time consuming. It's not hard when you have the right tools. Now don't forget to put your uh, inspection plate back on of the transmission if you took it off like I did to turn the motor. Um, anyhow again we are so this job is completed let's run this and see what it sounds like so here it is motor is running it seems to be much smoother and quieter so i'm happy with that a lot of that rattling has gone away we'll see how it does on the road i will put some of the parts some of the tools It'll help you complete this job in the description for you. So that made a huge difference just by adjusting the valves. It seems to run much smoother and a lot of your rattling, clickly clattery sounds are gone. It seems to be much smoother. So I'm quite happy with that. Hopefully that's helped somebody out. Now this thing's got 180K on it. It's supposed to be done around 150k. I'm sure it was never done. So I'm glad I did that. I'm happy with the job. Thank you for watching.